habits gather light friends who want to help. Fasting is Solomon's ring. Nor give it to some illusion and lose your power, but even if you have, if you've lost all will and control, they come back when you fast, like soldiers appearing out of the ground, penance at bellying above them. A table descends to your tent, Jesus' table. Expect to see it, when you pass it. This table spread with other food, better than the broth of cabbages. Bismillah. It's a habit of yours to walk slowly. You hold a grudge for years. With such heaviness, how can you be modest? With such attachments, can you expect to arrive anywhere? Be wide as the air to learn a secret. Right now your equal portions play in water, thick mud. Abraham learned how the sun and moon and the stars all set. He said, no longer will I try to assign partners for God. You are so weak, give up to grace. The ocean takes care of each wave till it gets to shore. You need more help than you know. You're trying to live your life in open scaffolding. Say this, Noah, in the name of God. As the priest was with a knife when he offers an animal. This Mila your old self to find your real name. Mean yourself. Little by little, mean yourself. This is the gist of what I have to say. 70. From an embryo, whose nourishment comes in the blood, moved to an infant drinking milk, to a child on solid food, to a searcher after wisdom, to a hunter of more invisible game. Think how it is to have a conversation with an embryo. You might say, the world outside is vast and intricate. There are wheat fields and mountain passes, and orchards in bloom. At night there are millions of galaxies, and in sunlight the beauty of friends dancing at a wedding. You ask the embryo why he, or she, stays cooped up in the dark with eyes closed. Listen to the answer. There is no other world. I only know what I've experienced. You must be hallucinating. After the meditation. Now I see something in my listeners that won't let me continue this way. The ocean flows back in and puts up a foam barrier. And then withdraws. After a while, it will come in again. This audience wants to hear more about the visiting Sufi and his friends in meditation. But be discerning, don't think of this as a normal character in an ordinary story. The ecstatic meditation ended, dishes of food were brought out. Point 71. The Sufi remembered his donkey that had carried him all day. He called to the servant there. Please, go to the stable and mix the barley generously with the straw for the animal. Please, don't worry yourself with such matters. All things have been attended to. But I want to make sure that you wet the barley first. He's an old donkey, and his teeth are shaky. Why are you telling me this I have given the appropriate orders? But did you remove the saddle gently, and put salve on the sword he has? I have served thousands of guests with these difficulties, and all have gone away satisfied. Here, you are treated as family. Do not worry, enjoy yourself. But did you warm his water just a little, and then add only a bit of straw to the barley? Sir, I'm ashamed for you. And please, sweep the stall clean of stones and dung, and scatter a little dry earth in it. For God's sake, sir, leave my business to me. And did you three calm his back? He loves that. Sir, I am personally responsible for all these chores. The servant turned and left at a brisk pace. 
to join his friends in the street. The Sufi then lay down to sleep and had terrible dreams about his donkey. How it was being torn to pieces by a wolf, or falling helplessly into a ditch. And his dreaming was right. His donkey was being totally neglected, weak and gasping, without food or water all the night long. The servant had done nothing he said he would. There are such vicious and empty flatterers in your life. You be careful. Donkey tending work. Don't trust that to anyone else. There are hypocrites who will praise you, but who do not care about the health of your hard donkey. Be concentrated and leonine in the hunt for what is your true nourishment. Don't be distracted by blandishment noises, of any sort. The dog in the doorway. This is how it is when your animal energies, the knocks, dominate your soul. You have a piece of fine linen that you're going to make into a coat to give to a friend, but someone else uses it to make a pair of pants. The linen has no choice in the matter. It must submit. Or, it's like someone breaks into your house and goes to the garden and plants thorn bushes. An ugly humiliation falls over the place. Or, you've seen a nomad's dog lying at the tent entrance, with his head on the threshold and his eyes closed. 73. Children pull his tail and touch his face, but he doesn't move. He loves the children's attention and stays humble within it. But if a stranger walks by, he'll spring up ferociously. Now, what if that dog's owner were not able to control it? A poor dervish might appear. The dog storms out. The dervish says, I take refuge with God when the dog of arrogance attacks, and the owner has to say, so do I. I'm helpless against this creature even in my own house. Just as you can't come close, I can't go out. This is how animal energy becomes monstrous and ruins your life's freshness and beauty. Think of taking this dog out to hunt. You be the quarry. The light you give off did not come from a pelvis. Your features did not begin in semen. Don't try to hide inside anger radiance that cannot be hidden. Tending to shops. Don't run around this world. Looking for a hole to hide in. There are wild beasts in every cave. If you live with mice, the cat claws will find you. 74. The only real rest comes. When you're alone with God, live in the nowhere that you came from, even though you have an address here. That's why you see things in two ways. Sometimes you look at a person and see a cynical snake. Someone else sees a joyful lover. And you're both right. Everyone is half and half, like the black and white ox. Joseph looked ugly to his brothers, and most handsome to his father. You have eyes that see from that nowhere, and eyes that judge distances, how high and how low. You own two shops, and you run back and forth. Try to close the one that's a fearful trap, getting always smaller. Checkmate, this way, checkmate that. Keep open the shop where you're not selling fish hooks anymore. You are the free swimming fish. Think that you're gliding out from the face of a cliff like an eagle. Think you're walking like a tiger walks by himself in the forest. You're most handsome when you're after food. Spend less time with nightingales and peacocks. One is just a voice, the other just a color. A 75, 7, so bet, J.I. Meetings on the riverbank, on S-O-H-B-E-T. Sobet has no English equivalent.
It means something like mystical conversation on mystical subjects. The voices in Rumi's poetry come from many points on the inner outer spectrum. The outer conversations are contained within quotation marks, and the inner ones are continuous and permeate the entire fabric of his poetry. On the most ordinary level, we all sometimes hear ourselves speaking from, say, some habitual pattern of meanness or acceptable optimism, then at other times we surprise ourselves by coming out with wisdom beyond our usual. There's a modulation between realities. This is similar to what happens with the fluid pronoun in Rumi's poetry. When you and I are sometimes the lover talking to the beloved, the personal self and a without form presence within and beyond the senses. Yet sometimes that presence, amazingly, speaks to Rumi through the poetry, voices slide back and forth within the same short poem. Often the poem serves as a slippery dorsal place between the two, partly in myself and partly outside, the voices coming from a between place. This expanding and contracting of identity is one of the exciting aspects of Rumi's art. Everything is conversation. Human beings are discourse. That flowing moves through you whether you say anything or not. Everything that happens is filled with pleasure and warmth because of the delight of the discourse that's always going on. Discourse 53 Rumi's poetry mirrors back to us this ocean of woven speech too intricate and dynamic for any grammarian to untangle. Why 6. Talking in the night. In the middle of the night, I cried out, who lives in this love I have? You said, I do, but I'm not here alone. Why are these other images with me? I said, they are reflections of you, just as the beautiful inhabitants of Jijil and Turkestan resemble each other. You said, but who is this other living being? That is my wounded soul. Then I brought that soul to you as a prisoner. This one is dangerous. I said, don't let him off easy. You winked and gave me one end of a delicate thread. Pull it tight, but don't break it. I reached my hand to touch you. You struck it down. Why are you so harsh with me? For good reason, but certainly not to keep you away. Whoever enters this place saying here I am must be slapped. This is not a pen for sheep. There are no separating distances here. This is love's sanctuary. Saladin is how the soul looks. Rub your eyes, and look again with love and love. Minus seven. Typing through the door. You said, who's at the door? I said, your slave. You said, what do you want? To see you and bow. How long will you wait? Until you call. How long will you cook? Till the resurrection. We talked through the door. I claim with great love and that I had given up what the world gives to be in that love. You said, such claims require a witness. I said, this longing, these tears. You said, discredited witnesses. I said, surely not. You said, who did you come with? The majestic imagination you gave me. Why did you come? The musk of your wine was in the air. What is your intention? Friendship. What do you want from me? Grace. Then you asked, where have you been most comfortable? In the palace. What did you see there? Amazing things. Then why is it so desolate? Because all that can be taken away in a second. Why yes? Who can do that? This clear discernment. Where can you live safely then? In surrender. What is this giving up? A peace that saves us. 
Is there no threat of disaster? Only what comes in your street, inside your love. How do you walk there? Imperfection, now silence. If I told more of this conversation, those listening would leave themselves. There would be no door, no roof or window either. A mouse and a frog. A mouse and a frog meet every morning on the riverbank. They sit in a nook of the ground and talk. Each morning, the second they see each other, they open easily, telling stories and dreams and secrets, empty of any fear or suspicious holding back. To watch and listen to those two is to understand how, as it's written, sometimes when two beings come together, Christ becomes visible. The mouse starts laughing out a story he hasn't thought of in five years, and the telling might take five years. There's no blocking the speech flow river running all carrying momentum that true intimacy is. Bitterness doesn't have a chance with those two. 79. The God Messenger, Peter, touches a roasted fish. It leaps off the grill back into the water. Friend sits by friend, and the tablets appear. They read the mysteries off each other's foreheads. But one day the mouse complains, there are times when I want sob it, and you're out in the water, jumping around where you can't hear me. We meet at this appointed time, but the text says, lovers pray constantly. Once a day, once a week, five times an hour, is not enough. Fish like we are need the ocean around us. You camel bells say, let's meet back here Thursday night. Ridiculous. They jingle together continuously, talking while the camel walks. The UK regular visits to yourself. Don't argue or answer rationally. Let us die. And dying, reply. The long string. The mouse asks the beloved frog. Do you know what you are to me? During the day, you're my energy for working. At night, you're my deepest sleep. But could we be together outside of time as well as inside? Physically, we meet only at breakfast. Your absence during the rest of the day. 80. Enters all my cravings. I drink 500 times too much. Like a bulimic trying to die. I eat. Help me. I know I'm not worth it, but your generosity is so vast. Let your sunlight shine on this piece of dung, and dry it out, so I can be used for fuel to warm and light up a bathhouse. Look on the terrible and stupid things I've done, and cause herbs and eglantine to grow out of them. The sun does this with the ground. Think what glories God can make from the fertilizer of sinning. The mouse continues to beg, my friend, I know I'm ugly to you. I'm ugly to me, I'm perfectly ugly. But look, you'll be sad when I die, won't you? You'll sit by my grave and weep a little. All I'm asking is, be with me that little bit of time while I'm still alive. Now, I want you now. A certain rich man was accustomed to honor a Sufi by giving him pieces of silver. Would you like one piece of silver now, O oh Lord of my spirit, or three at breakfast tomorrow morning? The Sufi answered, I love the half a coin that I have already in my hand from yesterday more than the promise of a whole one. A death. Today, or the promise of a hundred tomorrow. A Sufi is the child of this moment. Back to the mouse, who says, The slap of now has cash in its hand. Give me slaps, on the neck, anywhere. Soul of my soul of the soul or a hundred universes, be water in this now river. The jasmine flowers will lift on the brim, 
and someone far off can notice the flower colors and know there's water here. The sign is in the face. You can look at an orchard and tell if it rained last night. That freshness is the sign. Again, the mouse. Friend, I'm made from the ground, and for the ground. You're of the water. I'm always standing on the bank calling to you. Have mercy. I can't follow you into the water. Isn't there some way we can be in touch? A messenger. Some reminder. The two friends decided that the answer was a long, a longing. String. With one end tied to the mouse's foot and the other to the frog's so that by pulling on it their secret connection might be remembered and the two could meet, as the soul was with the body. The frog-like soul often escapes from the body and soars in the happy water. Then the mouse body pulls on the string, and the soul thinks, damn. I have to go back on the riverbank and talk with that scatterbrained mouse. You'll hear more about this when you really wake up, on Resurrection Day. 82. So the mouse and the frog tied the string, even though the frog had a hunch some tangling was to come. Never ignore those intuitions. When you feel some slight repugnance about doing something, listen to it. These premonitions come from God. Remember the story of the military elephant who was not moved toward the Kaaba. Paralyzed in that direction, yet swiftly pointed toward Yemen. It had some in knowing from the unseen. So the prophet Jacob, when his other sons wanted to take Joseph out in the country for two days, had a heart sickness about their going, and it was true, though divine destiny prevailed, despite his foreboding. As it will. It's not always a blind man who falls in a pit. Sometimes it's one who can see. A holy one does sometimes fall, but by that tribulation, he or she ascends, escapes many illusions, escapes conventional religion, escapes being so bound to phenomena. Think of how phenomena come trooping out of the desert of non-existence into this materiality. Morning and night, they arrive in a long line and take over from each other, it's my turn now. Get out. A son comes of age, and the father packs up. This place of phenomena is a wide exchange of highways, with everything going all sorts of different ways. We seem to be sitting still, but we're actually moving, and the fantasies of phenomena are sliding through us like ideas through curtains. They go to the well. 83. A deep love inside each of us, they fill their jars there, and they leave. There is a source they come from, and a fountain inside here. Be generous. Be grateful. Confess when you're not. We can't know what the divine intelligence has in mind. Who am I, standing in the midst of this thought traffic? The force of friendship. A sea cow, a new gong, finds a special pearl and brings it up on land at night. By the light it gives off the new gong can graze on hyacinths and lilies. The excrement of the new gong is precious ambergris because it eats such beauty. Anyone who feeds on majesty becomes eloquent. The bee, from mystic inspiration, fills its rooms with honey. So the dugong grazes at night in the pearl glow. Presently, a merchant comes and drops black loam over the pearl, then hides behind a tree to watch. The dugong surges about the meadow like a blind bull. Twenty times it rushes at nothing, passing the mound where the pearl is. So Satan couldn't see the spirit center inside Adam. 
God says, the sin, and the huge pearl for maiden gets buried under dirt. The merchant knows, but the dugong doesn't. 84. Every play pile with a pearl inside loves to be near any other play pile with a pearl, but those without pearls cannot stand to be near the hidden companionship. Remember the mouse on the riverbank? There's a love string stretching into the water hoping for the frog. Suddenly a raven grips the mouse and flies off. The frog too, from the river bottom, with one foot tangled in invisible string, follows, suspended in the air. Amazed faces ask, when did a raven ever go underwater and catch a frog? The frog answers, this is the force of friendship. What draws friends together does not conform to laws of nature. Form doesn't know about spiritual closeness. If a grain of barley approaches a grain of wheat, an ant must be carrying it. A black ant on black belt. You can't see it, but if grains go toward each other, it's there. A hand shifts our bird cages around. Some are brought closer. Some move apart. Do not try to reason it out. Be conscious of who draws you and who not. Gabriel was always there with Jesus, lifting him above the dark blue vault, the night fortress world, just as the raven of longing carries the flying frog. The Vigil Don't go to sleep one night. What you most want will come to you then. Warmed by a sun inside, you'll see wonders. 85. Tonight, don't put your head down. Be tough, and strength will come. That which adoration adores appears at night. Those asleep may miss it. One night Moses stayed awake and asked, and saw a light in a tree. Then he walked at night for ten years, until finally he saw the whole tree illuminated. Muhammad rode his horse through the night ski. The day is for work, the night for love. Don't let someone bewitch you. Some people sleep at night, but not lovers. They sit in the dark and talk to God, who told I have it. Those who sleep all night every night and claim to be connected to us, they lie. Lovers can't sleep when they feel the privacy of the beloved all around them. Someone who is thirsty may sleep for a little while, but he or she will dream of water, a full jar beside a creek, or the spiritual water you get from another person. All night, listen to the conversation. Stay up. This moment is all there is. Death will take it away soon enough. You'll be gone, and this earth will be left without a sweetheart, nothing but weeds growing inside thorns. I'm through. Read the rest of this poem in the dark tonight. Do I have a head? And feet? Shams, so loved by Tabrizians, I close my lips. I wait for you to come and open them. 86. Two friends. A certain person came to the friend's door and knocked. Who's there? One it's me. Quote. The friend answered. Go away. There's no place for raw meat at this table. The individual went wandering for a year. Nothing but the fire of separation can change hypocrisy and ego. The person returned completely cooked, walked up and down in front of the friend's house, gently knocked. Who is it? You. Quote. Please come in. Myself. There's no place in this house for two. The double end of the thread is not what goes through the eye of the needle. It's a single pointed, fine down, bread in, not a big ego beast with baggage. But how can a camel be thin to a thread? With the shears of practices, with doing things. 
and with help from the one who brings impossibilities to pass, who quiet